YouTube family, how are you? So in today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to make this beautiful beaded CD sun catcher. <laughs> so anyway, the paint job, ah! The paint job is this, and it's beautiful. And then I just strung up some beads. You can do it however you want to do it, but main, mainly I'm trying to show the uh, the CD. Let's get started. Here are the tools that you will need, and here are the paints that are used. All right, so um, everyone has an old CD, right? So go ahead and grab an old CD. Now it does have to be a CD, and I will go into that here in a minute, but um, to test to see if it is the peelable kind, if you're wanting to do one that is see-through, then take a pair of scissors or something sharp and just kind of scratch at one of the edges just to get it going. And if you don't get it started, it won't peel with the tape. You can stick tape on it and it won't come up. But if you get it started like that and just scratch it a little bit, then you can just stick tape on there. I'm just using clear packaging tape, shipping tape. Um, and then you just lift it up and it, uh, and that whole film will come right off. You know, and there were a couple little bits here and there that were harder to get off, but, um, I think that just depends on the CD, the actual CD, because some of them came really, really clean very easily and others not so much. Um, I did use a little Goo Gone and I was trying to get some of the little sticky residue from the tape off. Um, it works great. There was some green that came off and I think it's just the shiny bit. Uh, so it was a win-win. Goo Gone is good. Things not to use, uh, DVDs. They don't work. Um, it's totally different. It's not the same as a CD. Acetone. Do not use it. It will just ruin your disc. So, yeah. So that one was a, a practice one from, from that point on. So I'm going to re-peel another one. This one actually turned out much better than the first one. Came super clean. No problem at all. Alright, and then I wanted to um, practice the drilling because I didn't know if it would, you know, split the CD, but it turns out perfectly. So I went ahead and um, drilled my first initial hole in the good CD, the good disc that I'm going to use. And then I lined up my guideline stencil um, so that I could get the hole, the other hole right at the bottom. And that worked out perfectly for that. And then I wanted to cover all the bases for you guys, so I did practice with painting the discs as well. I used some regular Deco Art Americana black paint, and I applied it with a brush, um, and then I dried it, and it was a little streaky, uh, so I applied another layer, and I let each layer dry before moving on. Uh, and then the other way that I experimented with painting the discs was a spray paint. Now this was a Rust-Oleum uh, Universal Satin All-Purpose Paint and Primer in black. And I just am experimenting here with that disc that I had already messed up anyway. But I just wanted to see um, the difference between brush on and spray paint this is actually my first go at painting CDs so um, and then so this is the one that I painted with uh, a brush I'm gonna go on and spray it with a matte sealer so if I did mess up anything I could um, clean it up and it wouldn't remove the black paint so I wanted to make sure I sealed it before I got started so there it is dry I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side and then uh, spray paint the other side of the other one as well. So we have two discs going on here. Now this is probably my fault. I didn't let it dry is what I'm thinking all the way. The paint, the underneath paint layers. Um, and then this one is the spray paint. The spray paint did have a little tiny bit of cracking but nothing like the one with the brush. So if I were going to use a painted disc I would probably go with a spray painted disc. 
But in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you uh, on a clear disc, just because I thought, well, then you can see through it. You don't have to paint both sides unless you just wanted to paint both sides. Then yeah, then go with a painted disc. So anyway, back to the guideline stencil. I know that um, I have a million and a half uh, um, dry erase markers around here, but I couldn't find any of them. <laughs> so I went with uh, just my, you know, chalk pencil that I could find. And there's lines enough that I can see them. It's nothing major, but I can see them. So that works for me. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start with the design. So I'm using a color called Extreme Sheen, and this is a new paint by Deco Art. It's a metallic, and this one's called Light Blue Topaz, and it is absolutely beautiful paint. Um, and then what I did was just swirl out the center. Um, if it was a little, you know, thicker in spots and thinner in other spots, I just wanted it good and even, so I just used my nail stylus and just kind of swirled the paint around all the way up to the middle there and then just pick up your tool. You know just that this disc is so smooth it's, it's going to be a little bit different to paint on. Um, so moving on I'm going to be using a color called Aquamarine um, and this is another extreme sheen paint from Deco Art, and I'm using my light purple tool from my tool sets and I'm going to put one dot right above the large dot there that we've got um, and so we're just going to use all four of the guidelines I'm just going to put one on each try to center it right on that guideline if you, you know as, as best as you can and then we're going to work the sizes down so I'm going to grab the dark blue tool next and I'm going to put a dot on either side of that first dot. Now we're sticking with the aquamarine all the way down. And we're going to dot all the way down to the base, descending in size. So the next size, I'm using uh, my white tool. And then after that, just use whatever your largest uh, nail stylus is. Mine, I call a size 5 for the largest. And so I'm just going to go ahead and dip it and then dot, 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 dot all the way down to the base. And then go ahead and do it to the other side and do that to each one of the four. So now that's our first layer. And then moving on to the next color, it's called Sapphire. And it is a beautiful, rich blue color metallic paint. And we're basically doing... Um, like four petals all aiming in towards the center so it's a little bit different of a design we're going to be doing the same type of pattern all the way throughout so you want to start with your largest dot that's just a little bit larger than the previous row and then you're going to descend in size all the way down to either side so the first dot there on the second row here was a green tool now feel free to pause this and catch up. I just have to speed through, you know, certain sections here. It would be way too long of a tutorial. So the first initial dot there was with the green tool. The second dot um, that you put next to those was with the light purple tool. And now this third dot is with the dark blue tool. And then the white tool after that. And then you can use your nail stylus and dot all the way down to the base. Now keep in mind that you can use any color combination at all whatsoever that you love. Uh, maybe a rainbow design or a nice ombre fade would be pretty. You know, just make it your own. It's whatever colors that are your favorite. I just was trying to think of something that would be a nice color pop in the sun, you know, and have some, some good contrast with each other. So. So that's why I threw in uh, some pinks and some purples. All right, the next color is called Pink Tourmaline, and it is a nice rose pink, a nice medium pink. Um, but when these paints dry, let me tell you, they shimmer so beautifully in the sun. It's just 
it's a beautiful paint. And it's really actually perfect for this application of a, uh, a sun catcher uh, because it spins and it shimmers and that's exactly what you want. You know, you want some, some beautiful sparkle. That's what the point is. Beautiful, colorful sparkle. <laughs> so yeah, it works. It works really well for this application. And then just to recap here, the pink row for you. Um, the first dot was the dark purple tool followed by the light purple tool and then the dark blue tool and then the white tool and then now the nail stylus and you'll just go ahead and dot all the way down to the base with that. And that will be it for the pink row. And just look at how this is developing. It's looking gorgeous. And now I don't add any top dots, but you sure could if you wanted to. And I think that would be beautiful as well. So just whatever, whatever works. The next color is called Lavender Frost. And I stuck it on top of a paper towel because I know that part of the tool is going to, you know, fall into the hole. And I didn't want to mark up the table. So I'm just protecting it with a paper towel. Now when I moved it around, the disc did shift a little bit and it did cause um, some of the purple paint to kind of smear around on the opposite side. But it was not a big deal at all. I just went on and used that same paper towel and just, you know, wiped it up and then you just move on. So the next tool is the light purple tool. So I remembered that I have the most perfect um, natural amethyst stone beads. And so I was like, all right, so I wanted this dominant row here to be purple. Because to me, it's the largest row on the whole disc, and it's definitely the most dominant to me in my eyes. So I was like, all right, this one is going to be purple. And that way I can use and highlight these beautiful uh, stones that I've got. But it's whatever, whatever you have, whatever works for you, whatever your favorite color is, maybe you can throw that one in the middle there. And then, so, starting with the um, largest nail stylus, the size 5, I go ahead and dot a few times. So I dot and then dip it and then dot it and then dip it and then I'll dot all the way down. But it, I wanted a few of the same size, so I just go ahead and re-dip it and then redot it. But you can see how when you flip this over, it looks beautiful on the other side. It's like perfect. So yeah, I thought it was a good idea with, to go with clear. But yeah, you know, if you were wanting to do two different designs, because I've seen that and that looks gorgeous as well. And I might do another tutorial on one with a color background. So if that's something you might be interested in, um, leave me a comment and let me know if that would be something that you'd like to see, maybe uh, just a different design uh, and a front and a back. All right, so I followed up with the sky blue topaz and I did a row there. And then I'm gonna hit it up with some aquamarine and then after that, we are going to go, we're just kind of repeating the same colors. Um, so then the next will be sapphire. And then there's only a little teeny tiny bit of room left. And I throw on some of the pink. Uh, just to fill it out. And you really want to make sure this is super good and dry before you move on. And then feel free to add a layer of varnish, um, whether you like the gloss or the satin or the matte, whatever finish you like, just feel free to use that one. Um, all right, here is the finished product. It is all good and dry. And I'm going to add a few jump rings. Now you could add um, a number of things I've seen um, like fishing swivels and stuff like that but just be creative you know it's whatever you have on hand it's gonna work you can use any of these ideas or you can use none of these ideas and it's still gonna be beautiful and it's still gonna hang there and in, in all its glory um, I have a few different beads I'm trying to show you here I've got some rose quartz and I've got some glass beads and I've got some amethyst it's just whatever 
and then I tried to do this nice and slow but it looks like I cut off a little bit so you go I learned this um, I was raised fishing going fishing a lot uh, me and my brother fished even in my 20s I was going fishing I haven't fished now in a little while but I love fishing I just don't like hurting the fish um, I'm not going to be able to explain this knot to you. <laughs> you go through the jump ring twice. You know, you go through it once and then you wrap, just go right back through it again. And then you go and take that end, wrap it around the, the, uh, the beaded end three times and then put the end through both of the hoops and then pull and cut off your excess. That's a great, um, like no slip knot. For fishing string <laughs> all right here I'm showing you again so you go through the jump ring once you wrap it back around and go through the same way that you just went through and then you're gonna pull it down a little bit but don't pull it real tight right there and just kind of hold hold the loop open and then wrap the loose end around the beaded end three times and then put it through both of the loops at the base and then you hold the one end down and then you're going to pull on the beaded end and that will cinch up and be a nice tight uh, slip proof knot for you and this is just the way that mine looked um, but you know it could just be anything you could even hang uh, a few discs in a row and that is beautiful as well well here it is guys i hope you love this tutorial and if you did please don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you're new to my channel of course i would love to have you as a subscriber and if you have any comments for me or suggestions for future videos don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section below I'll see you soon this is pablo and he just wanted to say hi and i just really wanted him on camera I don't actually kiss him, I just act like I'm kissing him. He likes it. He likes it.